Go ahead and pause the video and reread the problem to yourself if that would help you get things started. What we're going to see is that after this individual stands up after viewing a sunset, counts a few seconds, and then looks to the next sunset, then she would be able to estimate the radius of the Earth based on her height. Seems a bit far-fetched, but hopefully the following calculations justify this approach. We're going to go ahead and look at this picture here that we have sketched, and you might want to look at point A first. Imagine the individual was lying down on the beach. We'll go ahead and draw her. She's looking horizontally at the sunset right here. She then stands up. So we're going to have her stand up. Let's see if we can draw this. And then the screen shifts. She stands up. Her head would be right here. And then she waits about 11 seconds. And then she looks to the next sunset, which would be where the sun is in this position here. And that's it. That's all the data we have. We have the 11 seconds and we have her height and somehow that's going to allow us to calculate the radius of the Earth. So let's talk about some of the labels in the diagram. We have the height of the individual labeled H. We have the two radii of the Earth labeled. Point A is when she was lying down. Point B is an arbitrary point that's going to help us form a right triangle. And then the distance from point B to the top of the individual's head was labeled D. We want to justify why this angle can be called theta. Let's talk about that for a moment. As the sun sweeps its way across the sky in those 11 or so seconds, it's going to trace out an angle right here that we can call theta. Now, if we look at the diagram carefully, that same angle theta would be located right here. Now this is a 90 degree angle right here, and we know that within this small right triangle, the sum of the angles would have to be 180 degrees, which would mean that this angle up in here is going to be 90 degrees minus theta. Now if you'd like justification for that, go ahead and add theta and 90 and 90 minus theta, you would see that the thetas cancel, and then you'd have 90 plus 90 is 180. So that's 90 minus theta, but now let's look at the larger right triangle. We have this 90 degree angle, we have the angle we just discussed, and then we have the angle at the center of the Earth, which we've labeled theta. Now again, that should be justified because if you add those three angles together, if you add 90 minus theta to 90 to theta, again, the thetas cancel and the 90 plus 90 makes 180. So it's all holding together, obeying the 180 degree rule for triangles. Now, let's take a look at that larger right triangle. We'll highlight it in blue so that it stands out. It is a right triangle, so of course we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. We have the two legs of the triangle, D and R, so we can begin by saying D squared plus R squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now, look at that hypotenuse. You can see that it's made up of not just the radius of the Earth, but also the height of the individual. So that would have to be written as R plus the height of the individual, all of which would be squared. So there's your Pythagorean theorem, basically a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We're going to go ahead and multiply the right-hand side. So you would have to multiply r plus h by r plus h. If you did that, you would get r squared plus 2rh and then plus h squared. Now that's interesting. We have an r squared on both sides of the equation. So if you subtract r squared from both sides, they would cancel out. And then we're going to make an additional simplification. Let's consider the height of the individual, which was 1.7 meters as stated in the problem. Compare that value to the radius of the Earth. Now we all know the radius of the Earth is much, much larger than 1.7 meters. So what we can say is that relative to the radius, the height of the individual is really tiny. It's almost zero in relation to the radius of the Earth. So that would mean that this term, this h squared right here, because it's so small compared to the radius, it's essentially close to zero in relation to the radius, we can eliminate that term. And it's going to make our calculations easier. Now remember, we're trying to estimate the radius of the Earth, so this is a justifiable step. We can say that d squared is just approximately 2 times the radius times the height. And again, we're going to drop that h squared term. So this is a result that we're going to hold on to. We're just going to kind of put that in a box. We, we will refer back to that shortly. The next thing that we're going to do is look back at that blue right triangle, and we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry. In particular, we're going to be applying the tangent function. So let's kind of eliminate some of this work to make some space. We're going to look at the tangent of theta. Now the theta 
is the angle at the center of the Earth. We all know that the tangent of theta within a right triangle would equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. We can see that the side that's opposite of theta is marked D, and the adjacent side is the radius R of the Earth. If we multiply both sides of this equation by R, we would see that D is equal to R tangent of theta. Now, one more algebra maneuver we're going to make is to square both sides. And if you're wondering, well, why would we do that? Well, that's because if we square both sides of this equation, we're going to be able to develop an expression for d squared. And that's going to be useful because we have another expression in that box below also for d squared. So we can see that d squared would equal, now be careful here, when you square this product, you have to square both portions, if you will, of the product. So you'll have r squared multiplied by tangent squared of theta. Now, since this expression is equal to d squared, and this expression is also equal to d squared, we can set them equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that. If we divide both sides of this equation by r, in fact, why don't we divide both sides by r tangent squared of theta. We're going to get this done in one step. Now, if we do that, you can see that on the right-hand side, these two radii here will algebraically cancel out. And then over here, we're going to cancel one power of radius. So we can get rid of that radius, and then r to the 2 becomes r to the 1. So we'll just kind of cross it out that way, leaving us... Oh, of course, the tangent squareds of theta also cancel. We said we were going to do it in one step. So now we have the radius is equal to 2 times the height divided by the tangent squared of the angle theta. Now remember, theta is that angle that the sun swept out during its movement across the sky, basically as it kind of well, actually, as the Earth sort of rotates, then the Sun traces out that angle theta. We need to find that angle theta. We already have the height h, but without theta, we're not going to be able to get the radius, of course. So we need that angle theta, and we can do that by setting up a proportion. So here comes the proportion. We're going to say that theta over 360 degrees. That's going to be the left side of our proportion. And then here, we're going to say that the time it takes for the sun to sweep that angle theta, that would go along with theta, we would put that over the time that it takes for the sun to sweep 360 degrees around Earth. Now, of course, that would just be a 24-hour cycle. We don't want hours, however. We want seconds. So you can do a little bit of a conversion there, and if you do that, you'll get 86,400 seconds. So that's the time that it takes for the 24-hour cycle, except we're just expressing it in seconds. So hopefully this makes sense to you. 300 degrees, three, sorry, 360 degrees for a full day, 86,400 seconds for a full day, and then the corresponding values of theta and t are on top. Now, theta was swept out in a time of 11.1 seconds, I think it was. Indeed it was. So we're going to actually substitute in 11.1 seconds in for the time. And now we just do a little cross multiplication. If we multiply 360 by 11.1, .1, we're going to get 3996. We then have 86400 multiplied by theta is equal to that 3996. And then divide both sides of the equation by 86400. And you would see that theta, very small angle, is going to be around 0 0.04625 degrees. So that's the angle that the sun sweeps out in 11.1 .1 seconds. We can plug that in for theta along with the height of the individual. Make sure your calculator is on degree mode. Also make sure the way in which you square the tangent is as follows. You would want to take the tangent of the angle and then square it on your calculator. That would be how you perform the tangent squared. When you punch this in, you're going to get 5217957 which in scientific notation would be around 5.2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. Which is not a bad approximation. The actual radius of the Earth is somewhere around 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters. So we sort of underestimated it by a bit, but again, we only measured this by counting the number of seconds between sunsets after standing up on a beach. 
So to get that close is actually fairly impressive, and lo and behold, that is indeed the correct answer.